What's up everyone and welcome to episode 10 of Game Dev. In this episode I'm going to be teaching you guys how to create textures. Uh, we're just going to be getting started with the textures, we're not actually going to fully finish it today. There's quite a bit to it. So let's get started. Uh, first off what we're going to do is we're going to go into our shader. I'm just going to manipulate this a little bit. Um, we will need to add a new attribute here. For the actual, because it's just going to be a sprite sheet is what we're going to be loading. Uh, so we want the actual coordinates of our sprite sheet. So we're gonna make this a vec2 and we'll just call it a text. And we'll also need to create a varying here that we can set it our fragment shader. A text. Okay. So I'll just pass the parameter into the fragment shader here. And then in the fragment shader, create another varying here. Vec2 e text. And we'll also need something called a sampler 2D. So this sampler 2D is just going to be bound to a texture unit here. So we're going to say sampler 2D, and we'll call it utex. And then we just set that up in here. How we're going to do that is we're going to say vec4 color is equal to texture 2D. So this will get the texture. It'll bind it in the sampler and vtex. And the color specific to this quadrant here. We should have the color in that variable now, and then we're just going to say if call dot alpha, so if the alpha channel is less than 0 0.5, then we're just going to discard it. We're going to ignore it and set it to call times back for the call. So that'll allow us to have some opacity here as well, and we can multiply these uh, dedicated color. We can apply it over top of whatever texture we have. Uh, so next up what we're going to do is we're going to create a new dart file. This is just going to be a texture. So texture.dart and it's going to be part of alpha again because it's part of that library. We need to add it up here as well. Okay, let will do that. Uh, and in here we're going to create some static functions. But this is going to be a class texture first off. So we want to load these all at once. We don't want to just keep loading them over and over again whenever we call it. So we're actually just going to create a nice little helper function here so that we can load uh, all our textures at once and have them maintained in memory so we don't actually need to reload them. So static void, we'll call load all. And we'll just go all dot for each. So we'll do a loop here. For each texture, what we want to do is texture.load. Okay. What this is going to do is it's going to loop through every single variable in here, which are all textures, and it'll run this as a function, and for each different texture we get, we're going to call texture.load. Okay. Uh, so next up we need some variables in here, so we'll get the URL, and we'll get the gl. Texture. And let's create a constructor to set those. So again, we can use this.url, and that'll actually take the parameter and set it straight away. So we don't actually need to do anything about that. And here we'll just go all.add this. And then create that load function up here. So, And this is where we actually start dealing with uh, GLSL here. You know, image element, image, new image element. And we'll go texture is equal to gl.createTexture. And then we want to wait for that image to load, because it won't load right away. So say image.onload.listen. So we'll create an event here. And the event just run as this function right here. We'll do gl.bindTexture. And we want to do gl.texture2d and the texture. We've bound the texture, now we actually need to bind the image that we're going to be using for that texture. So we're going to say gl.text image 2d image, gl.texture 2d again, the level is just going to be zero. We're going to use an internal format of RGBA and a format of RGBA, same thing, and it's going to be an unsigned byte, and the image. Last. Okay, and now we're just going to set up two parameters here. Um, just so we know what kind of scaling we're going to be using. So text parameter i dot texture d, and this is going to be gl dot texture min filter. 
And we just we're just gonna use nearest neighbor. Nearest here. Filter, not filler. And the same thing, but this is gonna be mag. Maximum. Okay. So that's it for the texture class. Uh, now we're actually just gonna need to call it from our main here. So we'll do that in our start function. Right here. So we'll create it right here, and we'll just say texture.loadall. And then whenever we create a texture, we'll do it right here. It's some sort of URL right here. And that's about it for this episode. Uh, I'm just going to remove that because we don't really need it. Next episode, I'll actually implement some textures and we'll draw a sprite sheet and get that set up as well. I'll see you guys then.